The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're very glad you joined us this morning. Before we, get, before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, Kiko Auctioneers, Realtors, and of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Nancy Warmby, Executive Vice President of Medicine Center Pharmacy, and our very special guest, Barbara Fristashi, RN, Director Ambulatory Care at Mercy Medical Center. Good morning, Barbara. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. The rising cost of health care is a concern that we all share. Deductibles and co-pays continue to rise, and many of us struggle to manage medical expenses within our household budget. Consider the cost savings of visiting an urgent care, like Mercy Stat Care, compared to a visit to the emergency room. Studies show the average cost of a visit to an urgent care center is around $150, compared to almost $2,000 at the emergency room. Today we will dis- be discussing the benefits of urgent care clinics and when to consider using an urgent care. We'd like to remind our listeners that today's program is also available on our podcast, which can be downloaded from the App Store on your mobile phone. Look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, and you can listen to any of our programs anytime. If you have questions you'd like addressed during the program today, please post them on our live Facebook feed. So, Barbara, please introduce yourself. Tell our listeners a little bit about your role at Mercy Medical Center. Hey, well, good morning. Um, I'm Barbara Fristacci, and I am the uh, Administrative Director over our Ambulatory Services, which is uh, comprised, comprised of our Urgent Cares and Occupational Medicine. And I've been in healthcare for a little over 40 years. So we see these urgent care centers popping up in, up in many places. Why is that? Well, I think uh, there's a couple of reasons for urgent cares uh, coming up all over the place, and they are still growing um, in the United States. Uh, we'll see that they are st- continuing to pop up in uh, settings, and it's because of um, – there's a shortage of primary care physicians, uh, number one, and also because the consumer wants convenience and wants access. So these uh, centers are usually open seven days a week um, and evening hours, and that makes it very convenient um, and easy access for consumers. Tell us why there's a shortage of physicians. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I, know I, a lot, I know there's a lot of reasons. Yeah, I think there's uh, several reasons. I think um, right now uh, a lot of a lot of individuals that go into medicine are going into uh, positions that are more specialized, mm-hmm. um, that do procedures, and family practice isn't probably as sexy as something else is. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think that's one of the reasons. I see. So, Barbara, how many off-site locations does Mercy Medical <coughs> Center have around the community, and where are they located? Okay. We have <coughs> in Star- well, we have over um, ten health centers in um, our f- in our community. We have them in Alliance. We have them in Louisville, um, Lake or Uniontown, North Canton, Northeast um, Canton uh, is our St. Paul Square Center medical home, uh, Plain Township, Jackson Township, um, Maslin, and we also have one in Tuscarawas County uh, in New Philadelphia and one in Carrollton is, is, is our last one there. I've used the one in New Philadelphia myself before, and there's hardly ever a wait. It's really convenient. Yes. Yes. Uh, Which of these locations include stat care? Um, Our stat cares are located at our North Canton facility, at our uh, Jackson facility, Maslin facility, Plain facility, Tusk, and Carrollton. So this really shocked me when I read it. The New England Health Institute said as much as 56% of ER visits were totally avoidable, and it's one of the many reasons that America spent over $3 trillion in health care um, expenses. Can you talk to our listeners about the difference between a stat care urgent care center and emergency room visits? Sure. Um, the urgent care is for individuals that really want to be seen within, that need to be seen within 24 or 48 hours. Um, for their condition, whereas an emergency room visit is because an individual needs to be seen immediately. That's why it's titled emergency. If they don't have treatment quickly, then there's going to be some serious problem with life, or limb, or something like that. You know, I hope I'm not going to put you on the spot with this question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I read also that there are some insurance carriers that if you go to the emergency room mm-hmm. and it's not considered 
an necessary, mm-hmm. not an emergency, that they will no longer cover the bill. That's correct. That is correct. There are um, uh, insurances that are doing that now. So I think it's to try to encourage people to use the right care at the right time. But sometimes people don't know, and so they, they get fearful, and they go to the emergency room, and they you know end up not being admitted, or it's not an emergency, and then they, then they have that bill. Um, we step, sometimes see people come into the urgent care for that reason. They'll come to us first, kind of check it out, and yeah. then we end up sending them off to the emergency room if it truly is an emergency. Well, and the unf- unfortunate thing is, is the physicians and the emergency room staff can't be responsible for figuring out whose insurance is going to cover it and whose is not. No, they can't. And plus, they're under the um, EMTALA laws, which means you can't turn away anybody. You you must see a patient. Interesting. So, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Sure. I have before me a list prepared by our research associate who's sitting beside you. (laughs) Yes. And this list is is a list of things that you go to, common reasons you go to the emergency room for. What's your take on this? For the emergency room? Yes. Why would I go there instead of... Oh, why? Okay. Well, you would go there if you think you're having a heart attack or you have symptoms of a stroke uh, tr- trouble swallowing, vision problems, left-sided, right-sided weakness, um, you know, sudden onset like that, you want to go, call 911, number one, and go to the emergency room. If, you're, if you've had an accident and you have trauma, head trauma, you need to go to the emergency room. If you've cut yourself and you have severe bleeding and you can't get it to stop, you need to go to the emergency room. We can handle small lacerations in an urgent care, but something that would be deep, too deep all the way to the bone would be better served in an emergency room. Um, an individual that's passing out, um, those kinds of things, sink, those kinds of issues should, should go to the emergency room. Yeah. Okay, you got most of them. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, what I missed. What I missed. <laughs> oh, well, so, uh, a major fracture. Um, so if you have a compound fracture, something like that, a, a large bone fracture, you should go to the emergency room. Yeah. You think you broke your finger, you can come to an urgent care, something like that. Um, we we can handle those kinds of things. I'm not gonna, I'm not testing you with this. this no, that's is, okay. This, this really is a comprehensive <laughs> list. I'm looking at this thing last night. I'm thinking, okay, you know, severe abdominal pain, chest pain, mm-hmm. wheezing and shortness of breath, paralysis, intestinal bleeding, high fevers or rash, especially among children, mm-hmm. vaginal bleeding with pregnancy, repeated vomiting, poisoning, severe head or eye injuries, allergic reactions, <clears throat> and unconsciousness. Okay, I'm unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things that kind of mm-hmm. caught my eye was. Uh, it was the eye injuries, okay, mm-hmm. and going to an emergency room. If, I mean, how quickly can they get an ophthalmologist? In the, I know they're not res- they're residing in the emergency room. Um, you know, I'd have to get back to you on that. I don't know how fast they could get somebody, but they, they would be able to but get there's somebody. A, there's always somebody available on call. Correct, or, yes, or that's correct, okay. yes, somebody available. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Test over. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But, but maybe maybe we should jump back to uh, StatCare. Now, why yeah. would we go to StatCare? And I will say this, okay? Mm-hmm. The one thing that I that I saw on this, this research was that it's okay to go to StatCare w- with broken bones. And I'm thinking to myself, most StatCares in, in emergency clinics don't have the radiology equipment that, you know, that a hospital emergency room would have. And, and thinking back with my son having broken his arm twice in the same mm-hmm. place, you know, um, why would we want to go there? For, well, for, it depends for, on, the, like I said, the type of fracture that it is. But we do have radiology at all of our urgent care, so we can yeah. take x-rays. Our physicians even can, if they question what the fracture is, they can have a stat read by the hospital, by a, a radiologist at the hospital. So, And then we can splint that, and we can send the person on to an orthopod. So we can do those things. I know in my listening to patients in the stores and stuff that there is a lot more of that going on, like a couple of the orthopedic places actually have their own yes. clinics after Yes, hours. they do. Mm-hmm. I think Spectrum and uh, Omni both do. Both of them do, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I happen to have occasion to visit one of them, and I thought it was really fantastic mm-hmm. that you know, you didn't have to wait behind the sniffles in the emergency room and, you know, things yeah, like that. Sure. And I also was in an emergency room a few months ago. <laughs> and um, I just, I'm just kind of amazing the, the people streaming through there with things that, you know, are an emergency. Cut finger and, you know, yeah. stuff like that. I'm thinking, gosh, mm-hmm. so, so how do we get this message out there? 
Well, you know, I think we, we try to do that through education, um, but I think sometimes people just, you know, go on to the emergency room for care. But it does increase our costs and increases the cost of care, and it's the, a bad uh, utilization of our resources. Um, we should be using our emergency yeah. rooms for emergencies and other facilities, your primary care physician, urgent cares, um, retail clinics for the things that are appropriate for, at that time. Yeah. So I, I keep looking at this concept and I'm thinking to myself, all right, how do we train the public? Okay. I mean, this is a <clears> – <throat> we hit everybody with television and mm-hmm. Internet and radio and all that other kind of stuff. But how do we – how do we get this message across to the community that, you know, here's – you've got to go here, you got to go here, or don't go there, you know, with, with, with a finger cut or something mm-hmm. like that? I think it's just education. I think it's uh, and what we have to do with our, our patients and the, the media. Um, if you look online, people always look things up online and kind of get an idea of where I'm supposed to go. They look at uh, WebMD or they yeah. put in their symptoms, and unfortunately sometimes that creates a whole other thing, and then they yeah. run off to the emergency room because they think it's going to be something worse. So, uh, I, think there's, I think there's an intimidation that uh, – factors sort of that you know i want the best you know I'm, I'm going to the emergency room because i want you know i know there's a whole bunch of people there and the stat care maybe there's only two people or and they have better equipment and da 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 and all that sort of thing so well i i, I would uh, challenge anybody to think that we don't have the right equipment i mean we are joint commission uh, accredited as well so we have all the the materials that we need yeah. to care for our patients appropriately. The emergency room does have far more, of course, at their disposal. They have CT and MRI and those sure. kinds of things, but those things aren't necessarily um, appropriate for you. And you many times people come in and they want something like that, but it's not appropriate. And even today with like what you were talking about, Nancy, with insurances, they still have to get um, sometimes authorization to do something like that. So yeah. it, it really can, you know, impede the care for a person that truly needs to be seen by the emergency room. And those people wait for hours and then they complain, but it's because true emergencies are usually ahead of them being taken care of. Yeah. Quite a while ago, I was driving down Route 21, and, of course, Madison Community Hospital was still, you know, in play. And on the highway there, they had a an LED sign or something, mm-hmm. wait time, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, at the emergency room mm-hmm. or something like that. Is, this, is Mercy Stat Care, are they involved in something like this? Or? We don't have anything that posts our time, but we do have uh, an indicator. We try to make sure that our patients, our throughput time is 60 minutes. That's what we shoot for. So we monitor that very closely. Right now, I can tell you we're all under about 60 minutes right now, mm-hmm. at it or under it. But during flu season, we can go beyond that because there are so many people that are being yeah. seen. And, you know, they, sometimes they all come in at the same time. So you have this whole group of people that are waiting and it takes time. So in the winter, in, in the flu season time, we're, we're 90 minutes plus, maybe 120 at some times. But many times we're right now, like right now, we're 60 minutes or less. That's from sign in to discharge. Which is still faster than the emergency. Oh, yeah, absolutely. By far yes. away. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X dot com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Have you heard about Tap On It? It's a new way to get great coupons on your smartphone from all types of vendors. Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies. So you text the words Tap On It, that's Tap On It, T-A-P-O-N-I-T, 82928. Tap on the link that comes up, and up comes your coupons. The Medicine Center Pharmacy coupons are buy $30 worth of merchandise at the Medicine Center Pharmacy and get $10 off. You can also earn a free first aid kit. This is a great way to save money. Tap on it at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. 
That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Wendy here from Studio Arts and Glass. I'd like to invite you to our annual Garden of the Art show, Friday and Saturday, June 14th and 15th from 9 until 8 p.m. You'll find fabulous, vibrant, colored summer jewelry, horsehair pottery, and tons of hummingbird feeders. Come for the great food and La Pizzeria's famous brownies. We're on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Or find us at studioartsandglass.com. Are you tired of spending time sorting your medication? Hi, pharmacist Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacy. A locally owned Health Mart pharmacy, whether you are a caregiver or personally take medications, our pill packets will change how you take your medication forever. Instead of multiple pill bottles, you'll want to receive one easy dispensing box that contains all of your medications in individual packets. Organized by date, time, with instructions clearly labeled, it's simple, convenient, and safe. Call or stop by your local medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, Health Mart caring for you and about you. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Nancy and I are talking with Barbara Frustashi, RN, Director, Ambulatory Care of Mercy Medical Center. Have a question posted on our live Facebook feed. So, Barbara, mm-hmm. when we visit a Mercy Stack here, what professionals will we be seeing? We have board-certified family practitioners that work in our stack cares along um, with some advanced practitioners, some uh, physician assistants and nurse practitioners. The majority of the time you will see a physician, but there are times when we have um, our advanced practitioners on as well, and they work alongside them. Yeah. I noticed when I've been at Mercy Stack Cares before, there's quite a host of other services that are offered. Mm-hmm. Um, would you like Great. to explain some of those? Sure. At our health centers um, where we also have our Stack Cares, we have full lab services and we have um, diagnostic and uh, radiology. So there's MRI, CT, uh, bone density, mammography. Um, we also have, um, in some of our facilities, we have cardiac diagnostics, we have therapy services, um, sleep center at Jackson. Um, let's see, what am I missing? Employer uh, pain health management, services pain, pain management, our occupational medicine, yeah, work health and safety is at our North Canton facility, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Do all of the centers offer full radiology and full lab services? Um, they all do, but they're on different days, um, okay. except for, I would say, St. Paul's um, in Canton. The um, medical home does not have uh, radiology okay. and full service labs. So, Barbara, we understand that all Mercy Stat Care locations offer express check-in. Yeah. How does it work? What's okay. it about? What is well, it? express check-in um, is something we started last September. I think we rolled it out in September and, and one site each month. And what we what it is is that you have the opportunity to go online and put yourself in line for urgent care. So it, it gives a, a people the opportunity to kind of do their waiting in home versus waiting yeah, in sure. the in the uh, waiting room, and it's kind of convenient for people if they know they get up and they say this is the fifth day of this cold I can't take it no more and I've got a now I've got it now it's in my chest I think I need to be seen by the doctor, they can go online um, and put themselves uh, in a location that would be good for them. That's how nice. Many yeah, so when, how many people don't show up? <laughs> <laughs> no, they all do. do they, they all, really? they, all do. they all do show up. And so and it's nice because then when they have the opportunity when they do come in, they register, then we kind of pull them in and try to expedite their um their their time through there. And it doesn't mean that they're always it's not a guarantee and it's noted that way. But it we do try to get them up to the front of the line then. Okay, I'm not sure about this, but we didn't really have a, a vigorous flu thing this year, did we? Oh yeah, we did. did. We? Yeah, we did. Gosh, yeah, it was <laughs> So, <laughs> so that picks up the yeah, and that picks up yes. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. in, in your stat cares. Oh, okay. absolutely, yeah, okay. yeah. Our are, numbers are we, were very high this are year. Are we through that? We are. We are through it now. I think uh, two weeks ago they lifted it. I think they lifted all of the um, yeah, the flu restrictions. Yeah, it was very late. 
What about yeah. the measles? Have we seen any measles here? We uh, we have not seen them yet. Mm-mm, not in Canton, Stark County. Not that I'm aware of. I haven't seen anything that says that we have. Yeah. Thankful for that. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. we don't. Right. So, what are the current stat care hours? Are you open all night or? No, we're not opened all night like a uh, like an emergency room. So, but our North Canton facilities urgent care hours are Saturday through Sunday, eight to nine p.m. So seven days a week, eight to nine p.m. Okay. Um, Jackson is Monday through Friday, eight to nine p.m. And then Saturday, Sunday, nine to five. When's your busiest time? And, mm-hmm. People, people are, are real <laughs> whatever. I'm not going to know. And then nine o'clock at night, I got to do something. You know. Well, I think I think people think if they wait till the end of the shift or right before we oh. close, if they all come at that time, there's nobody's going to be there and they'll get in, they'll get out. But normally we have a group of people that will always come at the last minute. Really? Thinking that they'll be – and then that extends our, our hours, time. our time, you know. So – if you if you think you need to be seen, you know, come in. <laughs> Human nature. Is yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> but we ta- we'll take care of them. We, we they we'll take care of them. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, with the oil thing going on down in in uh, in uh, Carrollton, is there a lot of? That's starting to pick up. It we kind of saw a drop off for a little bit, but now it's starting to pick back up. So um, we are seeing more of those individuals coming in for um, physicals and there's things like that. Of, yeah, there's a bunch of permits going on. Down yeah, there, and right. Drilling, mm-hmm. drilling, and drilling. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I watched yeah. the on on one of the streets on my way to Louisville. There's a pipe company that supplies pipe for fracking. I, I watched the pipe to see how fast it goes out of the place when I drive right? by, and uh-huh. right now it's it's going out of there pretty quick. So wow, they must, must be rolling. Be. Mm-hmm. So, Paul, I I have a question for you. As we discuss some of these issues that might uh, send us to stack here during the summer, what would you recommend our listeners have in their medicine cabinet at home so they're prepared for uh, poison ivy, bug bites, or sunburn? Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of things that, that are very useful and needed. The simple doggone darn <clears throat> thing is Band-Aids and, and antibiotic ointment and, and some poison ivy cleaner cleansers mm-hmm. um when that thing first came on the on the market that product it was pretty expensive but now we have we kind of have knockouts and knockoffs and it's easier for you to put that in your in your medicine thing whatever and if you get to the poison ivy quickly and wash it with that it'll get it'll detox the the, the stuff yeah, yeah. the poison ivy stuff so um and there's a few other things you know gauzes maybe in in uh Maybe a, a ace bandage and some things along that line. So, you know, Mama used to know how to treat treat you. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't think <laughs> I better not say this. <laughs> I, I just don't think home treatment is like it used to be. You mm-hmm. know, years ago because we didn't, we couldn't go to the emergency room. We couldn't, you know, we couldn't run down and see the doctor and you know, that sort of thing. So, so just some of the simple things. And by the way, um, I don't know where we are, Nancy, but. Um, I think you have a special deal to share. We do. Um, we're going to give you a five dollars off our purchase of poison ivy products, tick repellents, and sun care products. And and um, we just got in a, a, a many many a real load of suntan stuff. So it's all being distributed right now in the stores. And and those products are available. They're inexpensive. Um, as they sit, we're going to give you another five dollars off. So. Gee whiz, protect yourself in the sun and, and all that sort of thing. And, and have the proper stuff around. I don't think we need peroxide anymore, but soap and water pretty much does it does a cleaning of just about, you know, anything needed. So, And I think they need to mention that they heard that on Health Matters to receive that special deal. Yep, that is correct. Okay. And we also have a goodbye, right? <laughs> You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. <laughs> You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. You won't want to miss this upcoming Kiko Absolute Auction with 
auctioneer Bill Gill Jr. on Wednesday, June 12th at 1131 North Revere Road, Akron, Ohio. You'll find fine Victorian furniture, Century Ford drawer chest, early comic books, jewelry, and Oriental rugs. Also, Lunt Sterling Culver Academy Sword. This is really quite beautiful. I saw it on the air. A banjo, Fender and Roland speakers, and much, much more. Call Bill Gill Jr. at 330-418-8727 or visit KikoAuctioneers.com for more information and future auctions. Hi, this is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Perhaps you've gotten the urge to venture outside and clean up the garage or do some yard work, resulting in muscle aches and pains. If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. Wendy here from Studio Arts and Glass. I'd like to invite you to our annual Garden of the Art show, Friday and Saturday, June 14th and 15th from 9 until 8 p.m. You'll find fabulous, vibrant, colored summer jewelry, horsehair pottery, and tons of hummingbird feeders. Come for the great food and La Pizzeria's famous brownies. We're on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Or find us at studioartsandglass.com. The half off and not by store in Louisville just got in a new load of furniture from a major department store. And also lots of new drugstore merchandise from large drug chains. Of course, all this merchandise, furniture and more is 50% off. And as a special gift to our loyal customers, we're reducing all of our furniture an additional 50% off. That's right, 50% off and an additional 50% off. Don't miss this Memorial Day sale. You'll regret it. The half off and not by store in Louisville. See us on Facebook or halfoffhotbuys.com. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today, Nancy and I are discussing the benefits of Mercy Stat Care Centers. We've got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. So, Barbara, we were mentioning earlier that it could be uh, a cost savings to go to stat care versus the emergency room, but yet it could be more expensive than going to your primary care physician. Can you explain that? Well, sure. Um, going to your primary care physician, you are going to have a usually a set fee um, for the type of uh, service that you're getting from him, what type of visit it is. In the urgent care, we also might be doing an x-ray. We might be also doing some point-of-service testing in your lab. So we'll have those fees added on, which you usually don't have in, an, in a uh, primary care office. So those are the reasons, part of the reasons that our, our costs are higher in an urgent care. It's less than an emergency room, a little bit more higher than a primary care office. Okay. How about some criteria? Can you share some criteria to help our listeners decide when they should visit stat care and when they should go to the ER? Well, sure. I think... If you if you think you're having uh, if you have chest pain you think it's a heart attack call nine one one. But I have chest pain all the time. So yeah, well, I know. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of people. But I think that there's a lot of people right, with indigestion and all it, that. Yes. Stuff. So I think you have to know. You know, if this is different chest pain, if you if you always have indigestion and this is not sure. that, and you're you're breaking out in a sweat and you feel nauseated and you have pain in your arm or pain in your jaw, you need to call nine one one. If you have severe abdominal pain that is unusual you need to to be seen it doesn't go away it doesn't go away you 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 should go to the emergency room if you have a sudden onset of a headache like a clap of thunder it's kind of, you need to to be seen in the emergency room yeah but that has to stay too is that what we're saying it's a sudden headache if it just all of a sudden you have this headache that yeah it came out of nowhere it, doesn't go away. it does not go away and okay. it's unlike what you've ever had in the past um you would you would go to the emergency room. Any trauma, a major you know a fracture, um, excessive bleeding. You you mentioned earlier uh, pregnancy with some sure. vaginal bleeding or anything like that, or a child, a small child that has a very high temperature, um, will, which should be seen in the emergency room. 
You know, for years, um, it was common to prescribe antibiotics for colds, mm. just about anything in the world that you went in there for. And I can remember in the early days of my career, that was, you know, there were so there were few antibiotics, but, but, but they were just constantly being, you know, prescribed. And, and, and so I, I'm, I'm sure most people show up, I want an antibiotic, you know, mm-hmm. that care, whatever, I have a sore throat or, mm-hmm. or, or whatever. So... What are we doing to, to, to sort of combat the, in the stat care environment to, to combat that excess? Well, what we are doing is we, we've adopted the antibiotic stewardship that the CDC has recommended and that CMS has recommended, as well now as the Joint Commission as of 2014. So we provide our patients with education. Um, they're just pamphlets that we get from the CDC that talks about the importance of, of taking your antibiotic, when you should take an antibiotic. And um, why you why you weren't prescribed an antibiotic today because the physician feels that it's a virus and so you know there's more education on that it kind of explains why you would not take the antibiotic and you're right too many antibiotics is not good we've 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 had that problem now we see drug resistance and um, uh, just problems with all of that and it's increased costs you know and, and antibiotics have a side effect too so. If you don't need it, you shouldn't be taking them. But we do always provide our, our patients with that information. They, many times they're not happy because they do want that antibiotic. Sure. But our, our and they, even the CDC um, will provide, they provide us with one pamphlet that says, um, you know, your physician does not feel you need an antibiotic at this time. Um, he's giving you a script not to fill unless two days later you don't feel any better. We know most patients go out and fill that, but yeah. we do try to meet their needs as well as so they don't have a return visit. But yeah. we don't prescribe it unless it's absolutely necessary. Well, well, you know, don't you think that, that now in, in this time we have much more sophisticated products for congestion and cough and cold and mm-hmm. and, and all that? So, so to me that seems like it would negate the, the public mm-hmm. – Thinking that, gee, maybe I don't need an antibiotic. Well, I, I think it does, but I think, too, I, Nancy and I were talking earlier, I think sometimes things that you hear in the media about uh, the child or the person that got sick and, you know, got very, very sick and septic and died, and so people kind of, you know, uh, associate that with whatever they're having, and so they right. want that antibiotic. They don't want that to happen to their child, their loved one. So they, they think they need that. But physicians can, you know, you see, you see a physician because you want their, their professional opinion. And they, you know, they're, they're trained. They understand that. And if we don't have anything that really indicates you should be on an antibiotic, they're, they're doing the best thing for you. I had a physician tell me once a while ago, he says, you know, I don't have to diagnose these people anymore with my patients when they come in because they come in with a whole list of stuff <laughs> that they printed off the Internet. Well, this is what I got. You know, I got I got the polio or whatever. <laughs> it's, he, yes, says, it's he says it's true. almost some of them. He said, I just I can't get through to them. He said, this yeah. is what they think they have, you mm-hmm. know, so we got to give them something. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just think, gee, the Internet's wonderful, but it's not wonderful sometimes. That's but, correct. Know, that is very but it correct. Is great yeah, it, it's great it is. It's frustrating to some of the physicians. Sometimes it's true. Yeah, yeah then it is. <laughs> Love it. So, Barbara, I was thinking, and we were talking about it a little bit earlier before the show. If you're headed to the emergency room or to a stat care, you're not seeing your family physician who doesn't know you so well. How should you be prepared, and what information should you have with you to make the most of the visit and make sure they can help you? Yeah, I think it's very important to have your your medical history. Um, and, and we ask for that when you come to an urgent care. You do have to fill out some paperwork. So we ask your your past history, what you've been diagnosed with, what kind of medications you're on. And that is probably one of the hardest things for people to tell us what their medication is. They'll say, I take a, a white pill. And it's, I love it. And it's, <laughs> and it's for... 10,000 white yeah, pills. <laughs> and I think it's for my blood sugar. Oh my you God. know, so those are the kinds of things that are frustrating. It's very beneficial to yeah. keep that... Keep a list with you. Put it in your purse. Put it in your wallet. Carry it with you so that when you go, you can you can put that information down because it's very important for a physician to know that along with what allergies you have. Do you have allergies to medications? Do you have allergies to foods? Those kinds of things, and that's that's very important. It helps a physician. Yeah, I I know we were discussing it. Our pharmacy has an app that we use, mm-hmm. and it came in so handy when my dad was ill because I could just open that app and hand it to the folks at the emergency room, and there was a complete list of all of his medications, along with that, the dosage of those medications, 
the date the medication was originally prescribed and the physician who prescribed it. So it really provided that nice history. And when you're uh, emotional or scared or nervous, sometimes those answers just aren't on the tip of your tongue, even though they should be. That's correct. Um, yes. So technology can be beneficial there, too. Absolutely. I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. I think that's a great app to have. So with so many urgent care centers, um, why is it important that we still have a primary care physician? Oh, it's very, very important to have a primary care physician. I think in uh, medicine today, you have to have a relationship with a physician who knows you, knows your history, um, keeps that information and when you go in annually for your physical and there are changes and there might be something that he can identify early on that can be addressed and taken care of versus finding it five six years later after it's happened then we have probably that's when people seek care and it's usually a complication of something and then you know we're we're using more resources the individual has now um, complications so it's much better to have a primary care physician that you have a relationship with that is monitoring your health. And usually your, your primary care physician is giving you guidance, too, on things to do to, to maintain your health and to stay healthy. So if I go to Stat Care on Saturday when my primary care physician is closed, mm-hmm. will he receive a record from Stat Care that I visited? Yes, he will. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, he will. That's awesome. Um. Do Mercy Stat Care locations provide treatment for occupational or job-related injuries? We will see anybody that has a, a an injury. We, they can come to the Stat Care, and we will um, we will take care of that injury. Um, Tuscarawas and Carrollton um, do um, the physicals and things like that for occupational medicine because of the distance. Mm-hmm. Um, after hours, um, they usually go to the emergency room. If, if we're closed, they go to the emergency room. But we, during the day, I would recommend that they go to work health and safety at the North Can facility. Okay, very good. So we talked about a lot of these things earlier, but um, I think it's really important to just kind of refresh for a minute. When would you go to the stack care and when would you go to the ER? Okay. Um, you'd come to the emergency room when there is threatening life or limb. So you want to go there when you have a something that is um, an emergency like we talked about, the heart attack, the stroke, uh, the severe bleeding, um, the um, intense abdominal pain that doesn't go away, the headache that doesn't go away, um, not headache that doesn't go away, that clap of thunder headache, a headache like you've never had before. Um, You would go to the emergency room, trauma, head injury, loss of consciousness, um, shortness of breath, you can't catch your breath, you go to the emergency room. You come to the urgent care when you know that you need to be seen within that 24 to 48 hours and you have a cold, you have a minor cut, um, you might have a fractured finger. You don't know if you have a, if you, you fell and your wrist is hurting. Do I have a fracture? You can come to the urgent care. We can do that x-ray. We can find that out. Um, you've had a cold for several days. You're not feeling better. Um, you're now coughing up something that doesn't look very good. You might want to come in and see the physician, get checked out, those kinds of things. If, if you're sitting at home and you're uncertain, can you call the stat care and say? Well, we can't give med- we can't give information over the phone. Um, we would tell you, you know, you need to, you need to come in and be seen. But I think today there's a lot of telemedicine. Uh, yeah. Most insurance companies do have something that, you know, teledoc or, um, you know, have a nurse, an on call nurse as well. So you might want to take advantage of that. If that's what your insurance company recommends, you might want to take advantage of that first. How does the teledoc thing fit into this this whole? Or what, I know there's a lot of different yeah, names. Telemed- for yeah, telemedicine yeah. and teledoc. Yeah. It's, it's, another, it's another option, I think, mm-hmm. for convenience and for people who, like in the middle of the night, um, when you don't want to go, it's not an emergency and the urgent cares are closed, but you really feel something is going on here the, a lot of those are 24 hours, and so you can pick up the phone and make a phone call. Sometimes they just talk to you over the phone. Sometimes it's a um, it's a, a visual. You know, you either do it uh, by Skype or yeah. something like that. A couple of our staff members have used it and are mm-hmm. sort of satisfied mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. it. You know, yeah. so um, I don't know. I guess it's going to be in, in remote areas. It's probably going to be a bigger player than I would think. So. Yes, that. yeah. That's that's really. Um, I think we're using it around here. If you see, you know, you'll see signs for it, and I think the insurance yeah, sure. companies are offering it. But yes, for in the rural areas, it's it's 
much uh, to an advantage of those for those individuals. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Have you heard about Tap On It? It's a new way to get great coupons on your smartphone from all types of vendors. Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies. So you text the words Tap On It, that's Tap On It, T-A-P-O-N-I-T, 82928. Tap on the link that comes up, and up comes your coupons. The Medicine Center Pharmacy coupons are buy $30 worth of merchandise at the Medicine Center Pharmacy and get $10 off. You can also earn a free first aid kit. This is a great way to save money. Tap on it at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville just got in a new load of furniture from a major department store, and also lots of new drugstore merchandise from large drug chains. Of course, all this merchandise, furniture, and more is 50% off. And as a special gift to our loyal customers, we're reducing all of our furniture an additional 50% off. That's right, 50% off and an additional 50% off. Don't miss this Memorial Day sale. You'll regret it. The Half Off and Hot Buy store in Louisville. See us on Facebook or halfoffhotbuys.com. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. When we hear the word pharmacy, we think prescriptions, right? Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Stark and Tuscarawas Counties, a locally owned Health Mart pharmacy. Of course we carry prescriptions, but our stores carry way more than that. We have a large selection of ostomy and diabetic supplies and compression socks. All of our pharmacies carry a variety of canes, walkers, bath seats, rollators, and commodes, all at super low prices. Our rollators are only $69.95. Call or stop by our local Medicine Center Pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. Thanks for joining us, and we're now going to finish the show. So, Barbara, I wanted to follow up on a comment that you made that's near and dear to my heart, um, but you commented how important it is to have a relationship with a physician who knows you. And I would like to add to that and just say how important it is to have a relationship with a pharmacist who knows you. So Paul will frequently say, He's my pharmacist, and Mm -hmm. he actually is my pharmacist. Mm -hmm. But so many people don't understand their medication. They don't understand how to take it properly. You know, you commented earlier, people show up at the emergency room. Oh, I take a white pill. I think it's for this. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. That's that's what we try to prohibit at our Mm -hmm. pharmacy. We, We want you to understand your medicine. We want you to know what it's for. We try to know our patients all by name and and develop that relationship. And I think that, um, I think that's something that we specialize in, but it's so very important for everyone to understand their medicine and also to maximize their health care so that it can actually help them live their best and their healthiest life. I agree with Mm -hmm. that. And and it, it, it is amazing what people put in their mouth that they don't really know what it is. Mm-hmm. They'll come in the store, well, the doctor wrote me these prescriptions or, or sent them in. Well, what are they for? So I know the doctor told them. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm thinking, you, you're going to take this? You don't know what it's for? You know? Right. So, right. Well, a lot of times you're afraid. You know, you're at the uh, doctor and you 
You get a diagnosis mm-hmm. and suddenly you stop hearing, even mm-hmm. though they're explaining. Mm-hmm. Which is why it's so much more important to have that relationship with your pharmacist. I would agree with that. I, I, I truly agree with that. And I think pharmacists are, are very important individuals and components of the healthcare team. I really do. You know, some of the things we do, we started years ago. And, and, and when the person came in with maybe a Scheduled two narcotic or, or a Vicodin or a, mm-hmm. or a Percocet or you know the, the commonly prescribed pain pain products. We we always suggested to them to try and use the minimal amount, maybe supplement it with a Tylenol tablet mm-hmm. or something like that, right. or break the tablet in half if it's a breakable tablet. You know, so mm-hmm. it's just I, I don't know. I said it earlier in the show that I, that I, I think we as a society are, are are really into pain and it just. We can't endure the backache, the, the maybe temporary, or mm-hmm. I fell and scraped my knee, or you know whatever. Mm-hmm. So, are we going to get there ever? That's a good question. I would hope that we could, um, but I think you know, a while back, uh, I think it was a joint commission that made pain a the sixth vital sign or fifth vital sign. Yeah. So people had the right to be free from yeah. pain, and that kind of exactly. stuck in everybody's head. And so, I have pain. I want something to take it away. And I think that's when we this all a lot of this kind of got started as well. In addition, a positive that turned into a little a, bit of a negative. Yeah. So yeah. We, we now do, do not have to ask that question. We used to have to ask that question regardless of what you came in for. Are if you, you have pain, pain mm-hmm. we don't have to do that anymore. Oh, so wow. unless unless they're coming in for because of pain. But yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Barbara, do you have a website or contact information or anything you'd like to share for our listeners? Sure, they can. Um, if for, for any of the stack cares, they could go to our cantonmercy.org site, uh, click on locations, and then all of our sites will drop down, and then they can choose the one that they want to go to. Or you know, I'm always available to talk to anybody. You could just call the hospital and ask for me, and they'll give you my extension or actually send you over to the Jackson facility. Oh, is that where you're located? I'm located at the Jackson facility, so you can call the Jackson stack care. Yes. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, you, you say that you do physicals. For we do sports physicals in our urgent cares. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Would you act as a, as a my physician? N- no. I can't come back to you. Okay. No, you can. Okay. People can come back in, but we do not. We're not your uh, physician of record per se Correct. in terms of a. Okay. Yeah, primary care. Right? I'm, I'm mm-hmm. thinking that, that initially that started with one or two of those places that I know of, and it got to be a sort of a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and they sort of backed off on that. Right, and that's why urgent cares don't do the CTs or make those recommendations, and they send them send you on either to your primary care doctor or to the ED if that is needed because they are not the – they if the follow-up – they don't follow up with the, phys, the, the patient to do the, the follow-up, so it has to go to someone else. It has to go where it, it can be treated then afterwards. So do all of your all, – all of your stat cares do athletic – Mm-hmm. Yes, we do. Yes. And how do we do Sports that? Men. They just they just come in for that. It's a, a flat fee. I think it's twenty five dollar fee. Okay, twenty twenty five dollar fee. And, and that mm-hmm. satisfies the. Yeah, they bring in their paperwork, and the physicians. Yes, we'll we'll okay. complete it with them and the, okay. and the parent. Mm-hmm. All right. And you were talking about the oil well too. Or did, thing to they, they... Yes, they they contract with our um, pretty much our Carrollton facility, and we take care of that for them. I mm-hmm. see. Yes. And basic treatments you will give them. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There used to be an awful lot of people down there mm-hmm. in the Carrollton area in the yeah. oil well scenario. I don't mm-hmm. think there's that many people down there anymore. Not, no, I think they're starting to. It's starting to pick back up. Is it? Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. yeah that's what that's what I've heard. We're talking yeah. about that earlier. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, are you going to build a new one? New, Another one? Uh, not at this time. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you won't tell us. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, our plane our plane location has been has moved, moved. Was, yeah. from yeah. the school is that, to is going Oakwood. Okay? It's going very, very well. Okay. I think it's our patients are very pleased because it's easier access. The parking, walk isn't yeah, as long. Parking is easier. Parking yeah. Is easier. Um, yeah, it's much much better. Yeah. Um, I guess there's a new restaurant coming over there too. Yeah, I heard I about that. that the the Mexican, I think, yeah, a Mexican, Mexican restaurant. Yeah, mm-hmm. so yeah very, it's kind it's kind of filling up. So the staff and the waiting people waiting have to wait. Yeah. We'll get something to eat. That's yeah, sort of thing, I'm, so. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, what do you neat. see as the future for urgent care? I still see urgent care out there until we, we see that uh, we have enough primary care physicians that are going to be available to take on the care of patients. I think we'll still see um, urgent cares for right now. Yeah. It seems like sometimes they wax and wane as far as clinics and 
whether it be a grocery store or a pharmacy or what have you. And I. Okay, guys, we're out of here. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Barb, very much. Uh, okay, thank for you. coming in today, sure. RN Director of Ambulatory Care at Mercy Medical Center. We'd like to remind the listeners: if you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thanks to our sponsors: Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, Kiko Auctioneers and Realtors, and of course, our producer. J.D. DeAngelis. As always, we thank you listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Have a healthy week and we'll see you right here again next Friday on News Talk 1480 WHBC. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, your pharmacists, Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now at MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. Be sure to join us next Friday at this time for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies.